Did you know that gold is doing better than the stock market so far this year? But doesn't mean that it is time for you to buy gold and add it to your portfolio. But also, how do you even add gold to your portfolio? Should you do it? Is this even a good idea? And for long-term investors, does this even add up? Let's go ahead and break it down. Gold has a lot of implications and it is definitely having a moment. It's actually doing better than it has done in several years, but why is that the case? I've got some answers for you. I'm going to answer them all. So let's just start from the top, but I'm gonna break down why gold is doing well right now, when does gold do well? Why is gold doing well? And then obviously how you can add it to your portfolio and the pros and the cons. So we are gonna cover all of the bases today. First, right now, at the time that we are doing this video, gold is up roughly 23% year to date. That is all year up until October 8th, okay? Now by the time you see this, or the day you're re-watching this, the numbers can change. At the time we're doing this, the stock market is up about 21%. So it's beating the stock market by roughly 2% at the time that we are doing this. That is good. Now that's also the best year gold has had in quite some time. Why is that the case? Now, gold is a very interesting asset. It is obviously as old as time, okay? People have been trading gold, holding gold, valuing gold since like biblical times, okay? But in modern times, gold tends to do well, when people are concerned about inflation, which in the United States has been interesting. So we know that inflation has been creeping down. We know that the Fed cut interest rates and inflation has definitely gone down and is, I wouldn't say is, is no longer a concern here in the U.S., but has taken a backseat and been slowly moving towards, I didn't say it was in the back of the bus, but it's moving closer and closer to the back of the bus, especially again, since the Fed cut interest rates. Well, it's still doing good, okay? But that's one thing. Also, uncertainty uncertainty for the u.s economy again taking more and more steps towards the back of the bus but also international uncertainty whether it is a real uncertainty or just a perceived uncertainty international or not people start to flock towards gold also close to election times and people get uncertain people get un get fearful people start to flock towards gold i think these are some factors as to why people start to buy gold during this time. Now, on election day, after election day, depending on who wins and who, who doesn't, is gold going to fall off or is gold going to con continue? I don't know what is going to happen after that. Now, the interesting thing here is because it is gold, because it is a commodity, and this is, goes into the cons here, is we don't know what is going to happen. It is a rock, okay? Gold is a commodity, which means that if you hold a piece of true genuine gold, and I hold a piece of true genuine gold, you are not going, there's no difference between what you own and what I own, unlike a company. There is a real difference between Apple and Google, okay? There is a real difference between an iPhone and an Android. Beyond the marketing stuff, there is a difference between how they build part A and how they build part B. There is a difference between Bing and Google at the end of the day. There is a difference between you know, different companies and the CEOs that run them and the employees that work there, all that type of stuff. There is no difference between one piece of gold and a different piece of gold. They have the exact same composition. That's it. There is no CEO. There is no competitive advantage. There aren't employees, right? They're just, at the end of the day, they're just rocks. And behind it is just people who feel a certain way at a certain point in time. And we don't really know why people gravitate towards them other than the fact that, hey, they think that people are gonna go back to a certain standard and feel like, hey, prices are going up, things are out of control, let me just grab something that is that is hard, right? That is a true asset and that is going to be gold. So that is one reason why people feel that gold is going up at this particular time. Inflation and uncertainty. So that is one reason as to why gold is doing better than the stock market at this point in time. But again, the margins are very thin. Gold up by 2% at this point in time. So we're gonna see where that goes. But 
what are some of the pros and the cons, right? And really, those are the pros. The fact that it's doing better, what are some of the cons? Again, I talked about the commodity. I talked about the fact there is no leadership, right? There is no CEO. Gold does come with a few fees. Okay, we're gonna talk a lot more about the ETF part of it in terms of like how you buy gold, but there are things called gold IRAs. These can have some advantages, meaning you get all the advantage of an IRA, an individual retirement account, you got tax benefits, but I've done the research, I've written articles for Business Insider and others on how to open up and buy your own gold IRA and do that whole process. Some of these IRAs can cost you $200 per year. Now for some people, you're like, okay, $200 a year, that's not a lot. Well, considering that I can open up an IRA at Fidelity or Charles Schwab for $0, that's a lot of money. When I can just open up an IRA off the street and buy an index fund and pay next to nothing, and somebody else is charging me a storage fee or whatever for $200, that, that does feel like a lot. Okay, so it's, it's just out there. If that's not a lot to you, totally fine. But I'm letting people know they can be expensive and that is something you do want to be aware of. If you are someone who wants to buy a gold ETF, we're going to talk about that near the end of the video, they can be more expensive than a regular index ETF where you're just buying stocks. Just be aware of those. So they can be a bit more expensive. Uh, when we talk about the history of gold, it does not historically pay as well or return as much as the stock market. So let's just run it back, okay? Right now, again, 23% versus 21%. 23% gain at the time that we're doing this video for gold compared to 21% for the S&P 500. However, let's take a step back. Let's take five steps back. So if we move back five years, the S&P 500 has gained 78%. 78% is the gain for the S&P 500. The gain for gold, 23%. That's it. That's it. If I go back five years, gold has only gained 23%. Is it still a gain? Yeah, but that gap is quite significant during that exact same time period. I think I'm going to choose, if I have to choose between just one, which you don't, which you don't, we're gonna talk about that as well, you know, the, the obvious advantage here is the stock market. And also don't forget, the stock market can pay dividends. You can choose stocks that pay dividends. That can be an advantage to you as well. And then there is the allocation piece because there are people that are gonna ask, okay, what about the fact that you can do both? You do not have to choose to just do gold or do the stock market. I think too often, especially in finance sometimes, just Americans in general, just humans in general, whatever it is, I think it gets people to do more clicks and just gets more engagement, or you are forced into a box where you have to choose one or the other. You don't. You can choose to do gold and stocks and real estate. You can do more than one thing. You, you got more than just a dollar, right? You can even split that dollar into at least a hundred cents, right? But, not that you should do that, but you can split your money into different allocations, different buckets. Well, here's what we do now. High net worth individuals have about 2%, 2% of their money allocated to gold. If you aspire to be a high net worth individual, I think 2% towards gold does make sense. If you want to have some exposure, meaning you want some money in gold, you truly believe in having some money in that, in that category and you feel very strongly about it, that thing 2% does make sense for you. Personally, right now for me, I have zero dollars in gold. And the reason why is because if I'm looking, I'm more of a long-term investor and I'm looking at the at the data and I'm seeing there's a 50% gap or so between the two, I want to make up all that ground that I can and plus those dividends. So I personally right now do not have any money in gold. As I get higher and higher up into that high net worth in, in individual your level, then maybe I have some extra change and I can throw some there. Maybe once the kids are out the house, right, then I can have some extra money and put some, you know, 2% in, in gold or something like that. Or if I don't have any money in crypto, because that's where my 2% is now, honestly. So I got digital gold, if that, if that counts for anything. If I didn't have crypto, then maybe that would have been my goal, but maybe that's, maybe that's just where I am. That's just me, okay? But that is kind of where I am, is I have my 2% crypto, 
maybe those people are clearly a lot older. Perhaps they are, their 2% isn't gold instead. So maybe that's just a bias on, on my part. Uh, also, crypto tends to be cheaper than gold. Just throwing it out there as well. But if you are somebody who says, okay, look, they are still all-time highs. There is still an advantage because, again, you, you were still profitable. Okay, you still made money if you invested in gold over the last five years. And you obviously made money this year. What are some ways to add gold to your portfolio? There are two primary ways. Not the only ways in the world, uh, but these are, are two primary ways. So one way, and the most tax advantage way, is to open a gold IRA. Okay, now I've written several articles about this. I'll make sure those articles are either in the comments or in the description below. That's going to take you to like Business Insider where I've written several reviews over several apps. Um, apps and companies and comparisons on all the research about their gold IRAs and how they work. But basically, you are going to open an IRA very similar to a regular stock IRA, except it is invested in gold. You would call them, open the IRA, and you would basically have a physical bar or gold of gold or bars of gold, plural, and it's going to be held at a storage facility through them. Okay, which is actually very interesting, very, very cool, except that they are holding it and storing it at a secure facility. By law, it has to be stored at their facility. And you do have to, by law, you don't have to pay for it, but they obviously are charging you for that storage. Um, but it has to be stored at a fac secure facility. You cannot hold it and be have that tax advantage sitting at your house. Okay, that's just how it works. And I guess for taxation and tracking purposes it has to be done that way if you decide that you want to have a gold bar shipped to your home for some strange reason you can also do that but it's not going to be under the ira rules where you can contribute a certain amount have it under the taxation rules and all that kind of stuff but the exact same companies can ship you that gold bar the advantage and disadvantages obviously you're gonna have exposure to gold disadvantages uh, disadvantages unlike me getting on my app and selling a share of Apple or something like that, I'm gonna have to call them on their 1-800 number and sell them that gold that gold bar back. I don't know what that price is gonna be like, okay? And I'm gonna be subject to whatever it is. It may be good, it may not be good based on whatever gold is that day. Question mark, okay? So you're gonna be subject to that. If you are shipped a physical bar of gold, I'm sure that's very, very cool to look at. I would like to have a bar of gold, I guess. But again, when I'm really ready to sell it, I'm going to have to call them and, and ship it back to them. And they're going to send me the money or I'm going to take it to a pawn shop or something. I don't know how that process would work. Very strange. Okay. But it is something you can do. You can take it to somebody or some entity. There are gold buyers in town, I'm sure, wherever you are. And you can sell that. So the, it is sellable. But again... Are you going to get the absolute best price or are you going to physically have to walk that gold bar all around town and then sell it? You probably can, but again, are you going to get the best price by the time you're driving from point A to point B to point C to ship that gold bar around? Gold prices are literally changing as you are doing that. Are you losing money as you're driving? Or are you gaining money as you're driving? Again, giant question mark. These are things that you are going to have to figure out. Then you have perhaps the most convenient way and that is a gold ETF. These ETFs are easier for you to buy and sell within your investing app. They are marked to, or tracing rather, the price of gold. It's not physically buying gold in the exact same way. They kind of mirror however gold prices move. So you're not physically directly buying gold, but you're getting something that acts as if it is moving in the exact same way. But the fees there are higher than what you would get from buying an index fund that you normally would in the stock market so you get the exposure right you get the the gains i guess that you would get from gold but you're also paying a slightly higher fee from a regular index fund so easier to buy and sell higher fees than a regular index fund so there are pros and cons on both sides what should you do again it depends on what your investing philosophy is, whether you feel it is worth the hassle and whether you think it is worth the fees to buy gold at this point in time. I'm giving you what, what I am doing personally, but again, my what I am doing with my money don't have to be what you are doing with your money. What I Where I am in my investing journey, I'm in my 30s, so I, I still got plenty of time. And by the time I am 40, 50, 60, those views may change, right? Yours can be completely different. If you are a brand new investor, 
someone who is in your early 20s, your teens, early 20s, mid 30s or so, I personally, I don't think it makes a ton of sense to be super invested in gold right now. Again, a 2% difference this year between where the stock market is and where gold is, I don't think it is worth the fees. I mean, again, a 2% difference and it costs you $200 a year just to hold a gold account might erase that difference depending on how much you're investing in. That's number one. Okay, and that's not the fees to buy the gold to begin with. Again, check out those articles and you'll see what some of the fees are just to buy the gold. So don't don't forget that part of it. So I just the fees really eat into what those returns can be. Again, it depends on how much you are investing as well. Also, and I'll be upfront with you as I always am from the people that I talked to when I did those articles and did the research and did the reviews. Usually, if you're not investing $25,000, $50,000 or more, it usually does not make as much sense. And that's because the fees are really going to add up. I mean, you invest in $1,000 and it's going to cost you $200 a year. We're talking 20%. That's a 20% fee. That is it. That's egregious, right? But if you're investing $25,000 in $200 a year, that's not going to bother you that much. Right, so it really depends on how much you are going to invest and then weigh the fees against that. So take all that into consideration before buying gold. And then don't forget, again, you don't have to invest in everything to make a profit. Remember, the regular old index funds over the last five years made nearly 80%, okay? 78% over the last five years compared to just 23. The old fashioned stuff still works, okay? Old fashioned stuff still works. Gold, I know it's a, it's a corny pun. It is shiny. It ain't new, okay, because gold is extremely old, but it is shiny right now and it's doing well right now. I don't want to say it, but all, all that glitters is not gold, <laughs> even though it is gold in this case. But I don't think we need to hop on it right now. I think stay focused. If it's a stock market that you are fixated on and that is what's doing well, and it is then stay the course, right? We do have incredible stocks that are still doing quite well. We did a list just last week and the week before that on some of the best tech stocks and the best stocks for October. If you want to know what those amazing stocks were, then these are the videos that you want to check out next.